Praise the Lord, this is Elder Sister Debbie, and it is finally time for church. Amen. All this heat. Praise God. Today's reading is coming out of the book of Psalms, chapter 119. The interesting thing about the book of Psalms, especially Psalms 119, it is not only the longest psalm in the Word of God, but if you open up your Word of God and begin to look at it, you will begin to see that there are alphabets or images, drawings that are above some of the texts. The hieroglyphic that you see are Hebrew letters. For example, Psalms 119, verses 1. There's a Hebrew letter, and that Hebrew letter has a word next to it, and it says Aleph. Aleph is the beginning. The writer of Psalms 119 begin to write from understanding and the knowledge of God. And so the Psalm 119, each prayer that the, rover, that the writer wrote has a Hebrew alphabet at the beginning. And each one shows who God is. For example, in Psalm 119 verse 1, the first Hebrew letter is Aleph. And then it says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. If you go down to verse 9, there's a second Hebrew letter right above that text. And that Hebrew letter is Beth, which means to dwell or a house. Saying that God is who we dwell in. His word is who we dwell in and the word was made flesh. So our text is coming from Psalm 119. And if you continue to read the Psalm, you will see each prayer that the man of God wrote, he began it first acknowledging God by Hebrew alphabet. And that Hebrew alphabet says who God is. Amen. Clearly he had a revelation. And we're starting at verse 9. Because verse 9 in the Hebrew letter that is over that text is the Hebrew letter Beth. And it means to dwell or to house. That is a Hebrew letter that is above that text. And it means to house or to dwell. And we know that we should dwell in God and we should dwell in his word. Amen. So the Psalms begin at verse 9. The prayer says, with all, with, with all shall a man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart I have sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and I have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. This is the reading from Psalms 119, verses 9 through 16. The prayer is about dwelling in the word of God, dwelling in the heart of God, and having God dwell within us. It starts off by saying in verse 9, with will, or how shall, or how do, a young man cleanse 
his ways? And the simple answer is that you take heed to the word of God. I support every house of God, no matter what the differences of our doctrines or how we may see a thing, I agree with them that crime, murder, strife, rape is in excess. We know that. It's been since the days of Noah. This is nothing new under this sun. But what I don't agree with when it comes to the houses of God is that as some sobering as it is to watch a house of God walk down the street with signs and candles saying stop the violence, wearing t-shirts that matches and tennis shoes that glow. One thing I have against that procedure is that it's ineffective. Though we different in the way that we are teaching this doctrine and we should not even be having that, but let's talk about how we address what we all see. I am not in agreement with walking down the street with signs that say stop the violence and matching t-shirts and tennis shoes. I don't agree with sitting in chairs and waving signs that say Jesus saves and you're sitting in your chairs on corners. I don't agree with that because it is ineffective. As many churches that would gather together and say we must stop the violence, we must get a hold of our young men I don't agree with how they're doing it. King David says, in order for a young man to change his heart, he must take heed of the word of God first. And though it looks good on the news, and the pastor is well known, and the people get their five minutes of fame, you are ineffective out here. What is needed is a sober word of God outside of your four walls. It's okay if you gather together and decide to march with matching t-shirts and candle lights and glowing tennis shoes. And grandmothers are walking down the street and being pushed in wheelchairs and people are on bicycles and their lights are glowing. And I don't, I'm okay with that fashion of it all. But you are ineffective. And the reason why you are ineffective, because David says in order for a young man to change his heart, he's got to grab hold of the word of God. That means that the fear of God must come in. That means the spirit of God must deal with the heart of a person, whether young or whether old. Sure, we can walk with matching t-shirts and tennis shoes that glow, but you are ineffective if you don't come beyond your four walls and your suppers and your anniversaries and your pastor's birthdays. If you're going to continue to share the word with those that's already fat in God, what sense does it make? David say, how can a young man cleanse his ways? If he take heed to the word of God, if he house himself in it, if he dwells himself in it, God said, I will write my words on your heart that you want, might not sin against me. If you have no fear of God, you don't fear what God can do to you. 
Maybe you need to take a scroll through the underworld sometimes and see the souls that would wish to have just one more day to tell their brothers and their sisters to reach out to loved ones and say, don't come to this place. Maybe you need to see what eternity really looks like. Maybe you're under some delusion where Prince says in 1999 we're going to all just dance and have a good time. Maybe you're trapped in some disco music of theology. Woo! How do a young man cleanse his way? How does he not wander? from God? How does he handle the temptations that comes against him? Book of Psalms 119 from verse 9 to verse 16 under the Hebrew letter Beth which means to house to dwell you must stay there What is the sin of the world? Everyone say that phrase. They sing about it. They wear t-shirts about it. But what is the sin of the world? In the year, in the month and in the day of zero, 14, zero, the man called Adam and his wife Eve took up a tree. God warned them of that tree and said the day that you take of it, the tree that gives you knowledge of good and of evil, you will surely die. What is the sin of the world? The sin of the world is what Adam did when he took up that tree. He decided that God no longer was going to be his counsel, that he was not going to be his knowledge, that he was no longer going to seek the righteousness or the mind of God. God was so displeased. He was so angry that day that not only did he shut the mouths of every animal that spoke to mankind. Not only did he close the mouth of every animal, amen, but he judged man that day and everyone that came out of the womb of that woman and the wound of the next woman, and the wound of the woman that was yesterday. That sin was so great, and it still is great today, where we are seeking knowledge, we are seeking counsel, we are seeking understanding from something else, from somebody else. That is the sin of this world. And God has never removed that judgment. I agree that the houses of God should come together. I agree that they should come beyond their four walls and their traditions because they already fed on the word and come and feed those that are lost, those that are thirsty, and those that are hungry. Jesus never told us to stay behind the wall. Behind the wall, according to Psalms 119, is where we find strength. It's where we are encouraged. It's where we hear the voice of our God. But you have made it a house of merchandise 
and fatness. Praise the Lord. Our reading is coming out of the book of Psalms. Verses 9 through 16 of Psalm 119. How do a young man cleanse his ways? Is it from matching t-shirts and glowing tennis shoes? Is it from marching down the street with solemn mouths? Singing old slave songs? I don't think so. That generation has passed. But God's word never fails. If the houses of God is clearly written, if you will push back your plate, if you will seek God's face and pray, he will counsel you. He will instruct you in the way that you may instruct others. Verse 15 says, I will meditate in thy precepts and I will have respect unto your ways. What is the sin of the world? The sin of the world is that mankind no longer seeks the judgment, the counsel, or the word of God. And the day that Adam and Eve took of the tree to seek knowledge in another way, God said, you're going to die. And men are dying today. Be driven by their own lust and crazy imagination. How can a young man cleanse his ways? It will not be with marching with matching t-shirts and tennis shoes that glow, candlesticks and slave songs. You need the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost comes with a clean heart. Seeking the counsel of a real God backed up by all heaven. I know it may not exist in your church. It may not exist in your congregation, but it hasn't gone nowhere when it came to heaven. The only people that's denying the power of God is those that don't believe in God anyway. The only people that's not serving Jesus is the people that don't believe in him anyway. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hope in thy word. We all agree that everything is in excess today. And that's because we're coming to the end of all prophecies. Prophecies since Abraham. Prophecies since Enoch. Prophecy says the testimonies of old. How can a young man cleanse his ways? It takes the word of God. It was the word of God that confronted us. And we looked into that mirror of that grace and became ashamed of the way we carried ourselves before a God that we say we love. We looked into that mirror of grace when we heard the scriptures. Thou must repent. Wash thy hands of thy sins. And when we looked into the face of that grace, we became ashamed and saw ourselves naked. It didn't take a t-shirt 
glowing shoes and candles. The only thing that can clean a man's heart is the word of God because he has to first see what beauty looks like. We have a distortion of what is beautiful, what is pure, what is honest, what is righteous. Why? Because of the sins of the world. Because we continually take up that tree that give us knowledge outside of the word of God. Try to go around God, beyond God. But God says this one thing, you better search my holy scriptures and see if you really have eternal life. And when you see that the path that you're on is going to shallow, you need to quickly change your steps. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is Elder Sister Debbie. How can a young man cleanse his ways? I agree that the houses of God should come together. Because crime, violence, this excess, children having mental issues, dealing with life, rape, and all the things we can name and things we probably don't even have a dream of because somewhere in this world, somebody's suffering of things that we don't even touch in the natural. Things we only see on TV. And yet, right across the water, there's black markets where they're selling children, stealing babies. Organs are being taken out of, it's all over. Crime is everywhere. And though I agree that the houses of God should come together, I don't have no art against that. Every house. Everybody should have a grievance for what's going on. If you got the name of Jesus Christ over your house of God, you have a responsibility to be out here. The church was never brought together so you can stay behind your walls and get fat. The preacher's fat. Their wives are fat. The children are hard-headed. The deacons are fat. Everybody's fat. And we have the souls of men dying, falling apart. While the church sit with all the answers and preach to themselves and amen their own selves. What good are you? Jesus said the harvest is the world. What world are you speaking to? You don't even speak to the world that's in your own household. Daughters giving away their virginities. Young men raising themselves. Mothers struggling. Fathers bewildered. That's because in the book of Psalms 119 verses 9 through 16 above verse 19 a very above verse 9 is a Hebrew letter in Psalms 119 every prayer that David wrote has a Hebrew letter that sits above that prayer that Hebrew letter stands for God it talks about his character, his name, his strength. In Psalms 119, verse 9, the Hebrew letter that sits over Psalm, that verse is the letter Bet. And it means to house. It means to dwell in. So David wrote, how can a young man change his his heart. How can he cleanse it? How can he even change his ways? He says he has to house 
the word of God. He has to dwell in commandments. He has to be kept by precepts. I don't have any art with churches. But I do have this one. I don't agree with marching down the street with matching t-shirts and glowing tennis shoes and candles and singing slave songs of how we're going to overcome. Jesus already overcome. What are you talking about? The only one that's still in slavery mind is you. How can we grab hold of our young? My mom did not put on a t-shirt that said Jesus saved. She didn't hum old slave songs in this house. She sat us down with a nice fat belt and made us learn our prayers. She lived a life of singing and trusting until her very death. I have no art with recreations and things to keep our young busy. I have an art with the church. That fake walking down the street singing slave songs with a candle and matching t-shirts and glowing tennis shoes is the power of God. How does a young man change his ways? How will your daughter begin to value her own body if you put the word of God and the fear of God in them? The day the church get quiet the day sin will reign greater than what it is. Psalm 119, verse 9, and we close scene. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid. Beth, hid it, dwell in it, in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Bless art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statues and I will not forget thy word. This is Elder Sister Debbie. The text came from Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16, under the Hebrew letter Beth, which means to house, means to dwell. Our music came from Maverick City Music. Check them out. Amazing groups. It's not one group. It's many groups. Many talents. True worship. Not talents to just make money, but to serve God. To minister to a God. To sing to him and to praise him. Check him out. If you want to check out my YouTube channel, it's Elder Debbie Starks. Right there on YouTube. I haven't been quiet. I've been busy. But I just haven't been out here in this heat. But you can check that out. Elder Debbie Starks, all the teachings are there. It's also going to list my webpage, 
which you can go down and download free my ebooks, download all my teachings. Everything is free. There's no profit. You don't have to sign up, be a member. You don't have to subscribe to nothing. The world is who I talk to. I don't count numbers on a YouTube channel. Elder Debbie Starks. Amen. This is Elder Debbie Starks. Be blessed. Because God says we bless. Wasn't holding you up